Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now, to, the topic of today is the axilla. You know, this armpit or depressed area over here between the arm, upper part of the arm and the side of the thorax, this pit or depression, it is being called as axilla. Now, note the part. To understand it properly, what you do? You put your hand in the axilla and hold these muscles. Look, in anatomical position, this is the anterior wall of the axilla. And then hold these muscles. This is the pos this posterior side. This is the posterior wall of the axilla. And then look, this is the medial wall of the axilla. And this is the lateral wall of the axilla. And look, this is the apex while this is the floor, this is the floor of the axilla. Okay, now let us discuss the boundaries of the axilla. First of all, I told you, look, this is the anterior boundary. And if you just orientate from the previous lecture, line structure in the anterior boundary is number one, you can see this pectoralis major, and number two, this subclavius, and three, this clavipectoral fascia, and four, this pectoralis minor. So in this way, the anterior wall of the axilla is being formed by pectoralis major, then the subclavius, and then the clavipectoral fascia, and then the pectoralis minor, and this border is being called as anterior axillary fold. Then look, the posterior wall of the axilla, this one, this posterior wall, which you put your hand like this, this is being formed, as I told you, you just look over it, the posterior wall is being formed by this subscapularis, by the teres major, and the tendon of latissimus dorsi muscle. These three muscles, and if you hold, again, like this, you can hold these three muscles, in your own hand, from posterior side, it is coming in the latissimus dorsi, and then the TDs, major muscle, it I have shown you, and then, and then, look, this is the subscapularis, this is the TDs, major, latissimus dorsi, this is the posterior wall, like this. And then look at the medial wall, look, the medial wall, this one, look, the medial wall, uh, if you look at this side, the medial wall is being formed by these upper four ribs and by these upper slips of the serratus anterior muscle, slips of serratus anterior, the, by the upper four ribs with intercostal muscles and slips of serratus anterior. This is the medial wall. Now look, note one point, look. The anterior wall is being formed by pectoralis major and other muscles. The pectoralis come over here to be attached to this lateral lip of this groove. Look, this groove, a depression, linear depression is called as groove. It is having this lateral lip and this medial lip. To this lateral lip is attached the pectoralis major, which is forming the anterior boundary. Where to this, over here to this middle lip, over here is being attached the teres major which is forming the posterior boundary and in this groove over here lies the tendon of latissimus dorsi look pectoralis major and over here the teres major latissimus dorsi in this way the lateral wall of the axilla is very narrow not the point Later wall of the axilla because this is the anterior wall, this is a posterior wall. This narrow groove between the two is forming the lateral wall of the axilla and is containing over here the tendon of long head of biceps and also having the, the, the tendon of latissimus dorsi being attached over here in the depth of the groove. And you can see it over here. Look. And also, one small muscle that lies over here, that is coraco, brachialis muscle. So the lateral wall is being formed, the lateral wall is being formed by 
the in, in the muscles and tendons lying in this groove that is the tendon of latissimus dorsi and tendon of long and of biceps and also over here lies in this area in this area this small muscle which you can see this coraco brachialis this is the lateral boundary now give your attention at the apex look look if you look at the neck this part is being called as posterior triangle of neck bounded by this sternocleidomastoid and trapezius and clavicle this you study in the second year but just note the point this is called a lateral posterior triangle of neck and look if you pass the probe from the axilla into the neck you would note that this opening or the apex of the axilla this apex of the axilla it is being bounded from the anterior side by the clavicle okay and from the posterior side look this this bounded by the clavicle and from the posterior side close guru by this upper border of the scapula and from the medial side by this outer border of the first rib in this way this canal or communication between the posterior triangle of neck or a posterior triangle of neck and the axilla this is also called as cervical axillary canal or also called as the apex of the axilla and it is through this canal through this canal that the structures from the neck passing into the axilla or from the axilla passing into the neck through this cervical axillary canal which is bounded from posterior side by this upper border of this scapula and from the anterior side by the clavicle and from the medial side by the outer border of the first strip this is cervical axillary canal or apex now the floor of the axilla i think you yourself can orientate this skin which you hold over here this is the floor of the axilla and you know the floor of the axilla is being formed over here by a skin which is hairy hairy skin and very rich in foul smelling sebaceous glands and then deep to the skin you know lies the fascia which in this area is being called as axillary fascia and look again this is the anterior axillary fold and this is the posterior axillary fold the fascia between the two that is being called as axillary fascia and then superficial to that is the skin which is hairy skin and which is very rich in sebaceous foul smelling gland this is the floor i hope it will be clear to you then when you open the axilla you will see many many structures over here lying in the axilla and the structure that lies over here in the axilla the structure which lies over here in the axilla number 1 look over here the structures you can see this big artery which is axillary artery and medial to that the big vein which is axillary vein and then you can see the three so the contents of the axilla the axillary artery and its branches the axillary vein and its tributaries and then the three cords of the brachial plexus that is lateral medial and posterior cord of brachial plexus and its branches and then you would see many left nodes scattered over here in the axilla which are called as axillary nerve nodes and the space between all the structures are being packed by almighty allah with fates so that the the, the different structures present in the axilla they are being packed like we pack the, the 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 different things in the box and we put the packing material between them so that they do not hit with one another in the same way the contents are inhibitors of the axilla are the axillary nerve nodes and the fates and then the axillary artery and its tributaries and then the uh, the end is branches and then the axillary vein and its tributaries then the three cords of brachial plexus and its branches this every all structure 
artery, vein, and quadriplegic plexus. The, this we will study in detail individually, but these are the counters or inhabitants of the axilla. Okay, thank you. This is all about the axilla.